Hello, I'm going to be talking about sticker sprays today. And I'm going to be going over just about four of them that I commonly use. They're going to give you a sense of how you might be applying other sticker sprays as, as well as the ones I'm specifically using today. Sticker sprays are Photoshop like or actual Photoshop brushes that have been imported into ArtRage. That means they're putting down stamps, little repeated stamps that create the illusion of a, a, a paint stroke. Um, it functions very differently from the brushes in ArtRage. They don't blend with each other. Um, you can't mix the colors together. So they don't function like a watercolor tool or oils does, or an oil brush does. Um, however, because they're not a brush, what they can do is lay down effects. This provides us the opportunity to emulate some really interesting natural media effects um, with our sticker sprays. So I use them in conjunction with the watercolor tools. I don't really paint just with sticker sprays. I lay down color, much as you see here, all the stuff I've been doing, and then um, I come back in and I do effects on top. So using the sticker spray. So right now I've got my overlay, my texture overlay. I have this this uh, layer here. I have color work, line work, all these other other things that we're gonna you, know, you would normally have in a painting. I've hit sticker spray. Let's go over to the presets, and I have it. I don't want to use airbrush spots yet. What I want to use is Juice's Grunge Triangular Chaos. Juice's Grunge um, provides a big um, sort of soft um, effect. The brush paints very um, with a very pale amount of saturation, and it spreads out these little crosses everywhere. I mean, it looks ridiculous here. You think, what use is that? But then you use it. And because it's so spread out, and because it's so soft, um, you can get some really interesting effects. And you'll see here, I actually increase the sort of uh, value here. It's quite dark uh, for, compared to everything else in this painting. That's mostly because once I start laying it down, it um, it becomes very pale. So I'm just dusting the screen with this. I might actually bring it down just a bit. And I'm going to spread this around a little bit. I'm actually going to pick a second color and I'm going to wash the two together. Now I know, you're not all painting fairy wings. So <laughs> you're going to have to imagine uh, other applications. But um, what this is allowing me to do is, more importantly, is it's allowing me to come in and essentially emulate the experience of dispersion. So, you know, yes, I'm, I'm painting fairy wings, but what I'm really painting is the experience of putting um, a, ver a, a very diluted wash of pigment into a very wet area, and then poof, away it goes, right? So, you know, this is what the triangular chaos brush can do for you. It's a beautiful effect, and it looks very much like natural media. I also want to show you here, I have a grumpy chicken, an alternate way that I work with triangular chaos. You can see there I have it on. I'm going to pick something like a uh, pale yellow. But I want it, so I have this yellow down with a bit of orange. I'm going to pick an even paler color. I'm going to come in and lock the transparency. Ah, no, nope, I want to actually get a separate color because I'm doing something different first. What I want to do is simulate the experience of colors separating when you apply them to the canvas. So for example, I might, you know, apply an orange and I might have had to, you know, or just, just kind of burnt color for a shadow and I might have had to mix a couple of colors together and perhaps some of them are, um, you know, granular and are going to separate once they go down into the pig down into the water. This is the kind of effect that you can simulate with um, Juice's brush because these little filigreed fingers that reach out, you know, what you're going to get is the experience that the blue has separated out and all those little um, bits of pigment are sinking into the canvas. 
And it's all done through these really digital and peculiar looking little X's and crosses, which you know you never really want to see. But the moment I zoom out, you can see what's going on here. You get this beautiful effect that looks very much like two colors have separated. So that's an additional use for that tool. The next one I want to show you is, called, is the airbrush splats tool. So I'm going to go back to the sticker sprays and I'm going to go to the art brushes. This is something that comes automatically in everybody's um, in everybody's edition of ArtBridge, if you have ArtBridge 3. So the Jews brushes, by the way, I'll grunge, I'm going to provide a, a link to that. So the airbrush splats um, provide a really interesting opportunity to begin to emulate the experience of laying down some salt. And it provides a chance to create some grit. So here I am actually going to um, move this into a paler wash of green. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to lock the transparency on this layer. And I'm just going to begin to dust some color, some, some, some splotches in. Um, come on, airbrush splat. There we go. So you can see this effect. It's really mellow. It's nothing that's going to change the world. But it can provide some really interesting opportunities. You see there it is real big. We don't want it that big. But I like it small. Then when I can come back in, is I can just delicately begin to um, smooth it out here and there. And just it's just a little bit of grit. You've got to play with it, and you'll see what it can do. You know, but then what you, when you pull back, what you've got is these very interesting, simple effects. I'm actually going to blow it out, and I'm going to come back up to the wings that we were talking about earlier. I'm going to make the brush real big. So you can see here it's like uh, 375. And I'm going to pick a pale color that's somewhat similar to what we were working with before, but paler than, but paler than what we've already laid down, right? And I begin to apply just a bit of salt. So then I can come back in and I can erase out the edges where I don't want them. And when I zoom out, what you've got is this great effect that you think, dang, that looks a lot like salt. So there are actually a number of other, um, I don't know, splat type brushes. Don't pick the 3D ones. They're emulating things like that have, you know, they're not flat like an oil uh, application. But down here, we also have things like texturing brush, speckled multi brush, etc. These are also things that are worth exploring because they're going to give you similar results when you apply them to the top of an already existing color. That is a very useful thing. Now, I'm just going to play around with an additional set of brushes that you're going to see that are particularly useful. These are the spongy flat brushes. I'm going to provide a link to these as well. There's a number of brushes for stamps that um, are essentially providing us the opportunity for um, sponges. So if you've painted with a sponge before, then, then it could provide some interesting opportunities. For example, I'm going to pick Splat Flat. And you're going to see, wow, that really looks like Steve's painting with a brush. I mean, painting with a sponge. You know, if I want to blow it up, I can do that too. So maybe I'm painting, I don't know, foliage in the background, right? Something like that. Now, if I was smart, I would have somehow made a mask of all of these guys and done it that way instead. But I haven't, so that's fine. This is mostly for the opportunity of um, demonstrating. And then what I can do is I can come back in, you know, and pick a separate color that's related. And I can come back in over the top. And you can see I can begin to get some really... Uh, watercolory effects essentially that are very diluted um, and modeled. So these sponge brushes are great. A neat trick you can do is you can open up the spray variations chart. Now I know the spray variations chart is kind of like an evil thing to a lot of people. So let's, but it, it does have some really useful functions. This is the normal sp splat flat, right? I come in and I, and I check where hue and random meet 
and I'm going to just increase it some. As you can see, it's up to 7. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to move it out of the way. And I'm going to come back in here. And what I'm going to do is, you know, I've got the same green, right? But you'll see as I begin to paint that the green is not just doing green anymore, right? Let's bring it over to the blue so you can see a, a different example. It's moving around in terms of hue because I have changed the hue. If I were to make it really drastic and crazy, you would see it's really playing with the hue. Now, I don't want to do that. I want it to be more um, realistic and gentle on the eye. So I'm going to do something that's just uh, real mellow. And you can get these fascinating effects that are beautiful, very much like working with a sponge. All of the different presets for, this, for the spongy flat cam category have different effects. So they all do different modeled spongy effects, which are exceptionally useful. One of the neat things you can do, of course, is you've set this hue, right? You think, well, I don't want to have to set the hue and have the spray variations chart out every single time I want to actually alter the hue. That's okay. You can make a new preset. So I'm just going to call it sticker spray. And it says, yeah, it already has one. That's fine. We're going to replace it. Why? Because now you can see, if I go back to spongy flat again, poof, that is gone. It's no longer doing that. It's not part of the basic setup for that brush. If I go to sticker spray, I've now created for myself a brand new um, a brand new setting. And now every time I want to do that hue variation with a random setting, it'll it'll let me do that. So make yourself, you know, presets, <laughs> please. They're there for you to use. I would say very briefly, please use preset groups. Much like we did with the palette knife, there are lots and lots and lots of categories, lots and lots of things you can download on the forums. There's a million brushes in there, and sometimes you'll get a whole group, and you'll fall in love with one brush. I happen to particularly like Triangular Chaos. Well, I can make a watercolor tools, and I can begin to import everything into the watercolor tools group preset category, and that will allow me to basically not have to be moving in between all of these groups. So. Depending on your methodology, you should be using those, and they will help speed up your workflow. Lastly, I want to show you very briefly, Neil Brushes also has some great stuff. Super Fuzz uh, also looks like a sponge, but a very wiry one. So let's see if we can darken this up. That's not darker. <laughs> Here we go. You can see it's almost as if I was taking a sponge and moving it around. So, and if I blow it up really big, you can begin to see the effect it can give. So, this is what sticker sprays do. And it's really worth pondering how you might like to use them because they can provide these kind of stamped effects that you just can't get with the Art Rage brushes. And um, having them in your toolbox is going to provide you a significantly wider array of, of essentially brush or application techniques. You know, you don't only paint with a brush, right? You can paint with anything. Sticker sprays allow you to paint with anything, basically. So somebody should make a credit card sticker spray, you know, the kind where you scrape it. <laughs> I want that too. But that's it for now for sticker sprays. Please make presets, use your spray variations chart to explore what you can do, make yourself new groups, make a new group for watercolors, make a new group for oils, and then you know when you paint in that style, you're not going to be switching around in between different groups all the time. So I'll be coming back later and talking about other things like uh, stencils, blend modes, um, and whatnot, and how we can apply those too, but this is it for now for sticker sprays. Thank you very much.